awesome thing about rod building is that I'll build a rod that's perfect for what the way I fish and the way I work that bait and the line and everything. But you know, someone taller than me, shorter than me, uh, you know, whatever it might be, um, that rod might not work for them. But that's the that's the awesome thing about building your own rods is that if you want a longer handle, you can do it. You know, if you need a stiffer rod because you set the hook softer, or if you need a, a you know a more parabolic bend, I mean, you just the the it's endless. The more I build rods, you know, the more I learn, um, you know, what I'm doing while I'm building them, and, and, and it's 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 helping me perform in my fishing. I mean, First John Boat tournament I fished, uh, I uh, you know I, I think we got second or third place and we won like 300 bucks. And, you know, being a 12 year old kid, winning 300 bucks was like you know you can buy a lot of slurpees and a lot of you know whatever you want at the gas station. You know, it was just it was awesome. That was a lot of money at the time. We had a little 12 foot aluminum boat. Um, you know, we were always running up creeks and. And uh, you know, just always uh, you know, pretty rough on our equipment, and uh, you know, broke a lot of rods. You know, uh, knocked a lot of guides off. You know, in trees and stuff, and uh, um, you know, and, and ended up just throwing a lot of them out. It would have been amazing uh, if I knew what I know now about rod repair. Um, you know, with all the stuff at mud hole. You know, it's it's uh, you know, could have fished, fixed most of those rods, and a lot of the ones. I mean, I was fishing with a lot of rods that the. Uh, um, you know the ceramic uh, ring inside the guide were knocked out. You know, and the the line was getting all frayed. And I mean, now I could have just you know easily changed that out and uh, probably would have caught more fish. After the whole John Boat thing, um, I, I fished a lot. I actually uh, signed up. I fished uh, Central Florida Bass Anglers, and and I started uh, you know fishing a lot of these clubs that would um, go outside this area and uh, you know fish a lot on Toho, Lake Harris, uh, Okeechobee, uh, just pretty much all around in Florida here and. Uh, and, and and when I started doing that, I really realized, you know, this is what I want to do. You know, I, I really I enjoyed going to these different lakes, going to new bodies of water I haven't went to, and, and tried to learn them uh, all these different times of the year, and uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, you know, it was just a dream. It wasn't something I knew, you know, oh, I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to be doing. It was something I was gonna, uh, you know, give it all I got and 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 make it happen as best as I could and not have any regrets. John Cox, a local sight fishing specialist. He's seeing and catching fish that no one else has been able to find. Coming off that season, uh, you know, we, we made good money, me and my buddy. Um, he was fishing, Keith, I was fishing co-angler. And uh, we're, you know, it was just that, it was that next step. You know, the tour was the next step after that. And, uh, you know, he was like, hey, let's do it, let's go. It was crazy how, you know, we're getting ready to leave for this thing. We have no money. We, you know, Keith borrows his dad's credit card. You know, we get on the road. We get all the way there. Um, you know, and, and it was just, uh, you know, it was like, this is it. This is our last chance. He's had to get through a drainage ditch to get to a spot. He's using a 17 foot aluminum boat, out of a 75 horsepower motor, but it's still flat. It's just shallow in the water. He's able to get to a spot. And when he gets there, he's catching 14 pounds a day. John Cox leading the tournament going into the final day. I was leading the tournament and uh, Keith was in second the whole time and I actually drew the co-angler that was leading. So I had the co-angler that was leading and I knew if I went to my spot where I was going through this tunnel 
that my co-angler would win and Keith wouldn't win. And so that day when I took off, I thought, I said, you know what, I'm not even going to go to that hole. I'm going to give chance, I'm going to give Keith a chance to win this thing. And so I took my guy and went to a completely different area and knowing I might lose the tournament, but I was like, you know, Keith's going to, you know, Keith's been doing this as much as I have. He, he wants to win when he was in second place. And, uh, you know, Keith ends up winning the co-angler side day three. You know, my guy catches zero, I catch about 12 pounds, I barely keep the lead. That's got you in first place with 40 pounds and 11 ounces. Your champion is Sean Cox. That was the coolest thing is that we both went there so broke and we both came out, um, you know, with $120,000. You know, we were high-fiving the whole way back to the house. <laughs> They didn't have a choice. I mean, I remember, I remember them right, both well, being in diapers and having them with me practicing. I, I had I had no babysitter, you know, and it was like, okay, if I'm gonna go practice for this thing, I'm gonna take them with me. And we went all the way out to Arkansas and you know threw their, their life jackets on and we went and you know and, and spent you know 12 hour days on the water and uh, you know so they I mean they've been there from the you know they uh, they haven't had a choice. <laughs> When they're catching fish and uh, you know they go to high five me, you know that's what I, you know, I know, I, you know, that uh, that I'm dad. <laughs> <laughs> they're changing so much the older they get. You know now they're seven and five. I mean, uh, you know at first I thought Savannah, you know, when Savannah was four and five. I was like, man, she's she's gonna fish. I mean, she can go all day. I mean, I remember the first, I, I hooked her with an Alabama rig one time. We're out on Gunnersville, you know, she's like four or five, you know, uh, she doesn't even have her hair yet. I hook her through the arm with the Alabama rig. Um, I yank it out and I'm like, you know, we need to go in. She's like, no, nah, dad, we're good. We she kept fishing with me, you know, and it's just like, you know, this is what she's going to do. And uh, she's changed a lot since then. You know, now it's like Lily's the one that wants to go all the time. And, uh, you know, Savannah wants to do some other things. So, you know, and I mean, I remember being the, the same way when I was younger. Like, I, I was kind of back and forth. You know, fishing was always there. But, you know, it was like there was other stuff that caught my attention that I wanted to try. And, uh, you know, I ended up always just falling back. I mean, I remember one time I wanted to be a professional BMXer, you know. So I was, like, jumping my bike and stuff. And then I uh, I knocked myself out. And I was in the hospital for, like, a couple weeks. And, uh you know, I started fishing again every day and was like, you know, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do instead, you know. Yeah, so I, I went five years with, without winning another tour event, um, you know, but pretty much I went four years of being really inconsistent. You know, at, at that time, um, I didn't realize because I didn't know what I know now about rod building, but the, the stuff I was using was was mostly uh, Florida-based. You know, it was for, like, vegetation. You know, everything was really stiff. Um, you know, they were big rods, um, you know, seven and a half, eight-foot rods. Um, and, and to be consistent on the tour, you have, to, you have to be able to fish everything. And you need to be able to uh, customize everything to... Um, you know, to compete with these guys, and uh, you know, and that just looking back at it, I mean, there was just so many, so many things I could have done different with my equipment if I was able to build my own stuff. So finally, in 2015, you know, I start building my own rods. Um, I, I just, I start learning so much about it, and 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 having all the right equipment. When I started rod building, uh, you know, some of the the challenges I had was just at first I was intimidated by. It. You know, just all the different, uh, you know, the stuff you needed and stuff, and uh, you know, just all the equipment. It was just overwhelming, you know. And it's like I gotta, you know, put all these guides on. They gotta be perfect. Um, but you know, after I built that first rod at Mudhole, it it just opened my eyes to how easy it was. And uh, you know, and I went I went to Bob and 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 Bob, you know, I'd tell him, you know, this blank I have, I want something, you know, a little bit softer and stuff. And we put them on the board and we. 
you know, we'd find the blank, and if we didn't have it, we we'd go make it, you know, get it and uh, and order it, and and it was just it, it was awesome. It just helped uh, so much. John Cox is in the hunt for his second tour victory, fishing the way he likes to fish, looking for Betty Bass in shallow water. But to win, he's gonna to have to outfish the three-time angler of the year and his boyhood hero, Clark Winlet, one of the best sight fishermen to ever compete in this sport. Uh, getting ready for Hartwell, um, you know, I knew I was gonna be fishing uh, real uh, clear water, um, you know, I knew I was going to need a spinning rod, um, you know, and, and I, you know, even being down here doing a lot of sight fishing, um, you know, with bait casters and using heavy line, I was like, you know, I want to get this spinning rod thing dialed in for bed fishing in that clear water. And, and that's what I did. I, I took a SJ842 and, um, you know, I, I built a couple different ones, but that was, that was the key one um, that had uh, enough parabolic bend. Um, you know, drive the hook in and the handle those big fish. I mean, I caught, you know, some six, seven pounders on that rod on, you know, on really light line. And uh, it was just, it was a perfect uh, application for it. I fished like 24 days straight and it was all sight fishing. It was all with that spinning rod. Um, I had so much confidence going into Hartwell where if these fish were going to go on the beds, uh, I was going to catch them. Cox, who always fishes shallow anyway, the mud hole pro had a bit more company than he was expecting. The fish definitely got uh, split up this oh. week. You know, everybody was on the bank pretty much, you know, and like there was a few times where uh, I would like wait for the guy, to, you know, someone to work a fish and leave it, and then I'd pull in and catch it. You know, it was just, it was like <laughs> we were like in a rotation. So it was, uh, I got her. it was exciting, but you know, it, I was kind of, was hoping it was going to be colder, you know, and because uh, then a lot of people would be out deep and then, you know, I'd go shallow and there wouldn't be as many people. and. The bite would still be good, but I, you know, I'm happy with it right now. I'm leading the tournament, so I can't complain. A little bit of an upgrade. John sits on top of the leaderboard as the weekend cut begins, and he finds himself leading some veteran sticks like Daryl Robertson and Clark Winlet. It was crazy too because it was so cold leading up to it. Everybody was like, "Oh, it's not going to warm up enough to you know to be any spawning fish." And uh, you know, as the week went on, and we kept seeing, "Oh, you know, we're getting ready to get record highs." You know, and then it was just, it was the perfect storm. I just pulled up to this little spot uh, where I was planning on staying all day. You know, it was just a muddy little pond. I thought I saw something like, you know, doing circles up in like five inches of water, you know, maybe like making a bed, but it just seemed like it was way too shallow, you know? And uh, and I slung my jig up to it and it just instantly just, just choked it. And I laid into the fish and uh, got it halfway to the boat and it come off, the hook opened up. You know, that's awful for the first bite of the morning, you know, that to happen, you know, I was just so disappointed. And I was just getting ready to leave. And I, uh, I was like, you know what, let's go try her one more time. Got her. God, oh my gosh. We got her. That's the one we lost. Holy smokes. That's the one that straightened the hook out on us. Oh. There we go, baby. That's the one we needed. Now we just need some three pounders. John Cox, here we go, man, from Deberry, Florida. One of the best shallow water anglers in the history of this game. 16-12 on day one, 20 pounds, five ounces on day two, 14 pounds and three ounces yesterday. Had you in second place, about a pound and five ounces off Clark Winland's lead. To take the lead from Jamie Horton, who was the first guy to weigh in and is still in the hot seat, you need just 11 pounds and five ounces. Here we go, a limit of bass today for John Cox. Worth. New leader, 16 pounds and two ounces. You got the lead. 16 pounds, two ounces of Lake Hartwell bass for John Cox. I needed that one, that's number one. He's won at all levels of tournament fishing, an All-American champion, BFL regional champion, 
four-time FLW Tour qualifier and three-time Angler of the Year. Welcome Cabela's Pro, Clark Winlet. It was so cool that it was me and him neck and neck going into this thing because he's someone I've, you know, been my idol forever. You know, I had, I mean, I had a Wheaties box with him on it, you know, when I was like 10, you know, in my room. So, you know, I, you know, it's just really cool. And it really hit me yesterday that, hey, look, I'm, I'm fishing with my idol now. So it's been an awesome tournament. We're gonna crown our champion right here. Two guys remain. Clark Winlands on day one. 17 pounds and nine ounces. Day two, 15 pounds, seven ounces. Day three, 19 pounds and nine ounces. Had you in first place with 52 pounds and nine ounces. To take the lead from John Cox, you need 14 pounds and 13 ounces. Anything less, you're the champ. Here we go, Clark Winlet. So how did that work out? Oh, I won the tournament. <laughs> 14 pounds and 6 ounces, your champion is John Cox of DeBerry, Florida. Wow! A great win for you, $100,000, man, making another run at that Angler of the Year title. A few months after Hartwell, you know, we had a couple other events, uh, you know, did okay in them, struggled in a couple of them. Um, but you know, made it to the cup. All year I've been working on this frog rod. Um, you know, even even from last year I've been working on it. And I've been mean, figuring out, you know, where I want the handle to be and kind of, you know, the guide spacing and stuff. The blank was perfect. It was FP885. And uh, you know, I finally feel like I got the handle length right, everything perfect, so I could roll cast up under trees, but I could also uh, have the power to drill the hooks in, into the fish. And uh, you know, and I just haven't been able to use it. I haven't got on a frog bite. I finally got about 30 miles back in this creek. Um, you know, my brother's first bite was like a five pounder. You know, and I'm like, man, we are, we are practicing for the forest wood cut. I was like, shake them, shake them off. What are you doing? Like, you know, he jacks this one. He's like, hey, take my picture with it. And I took his picture. I'm like, hey, get any more, shake them off. So we're going a little bit further. He sticks another one, another big one. And I'm just like, all right, that's it. You're done. You know, got him, tell him to put his rod down and, uh, he quits fishing, you know, I get a couple more bites and, uh, you know, well, we take off and get ready for the tournament. It has indeed been an exciting season on the Walmart FLW Tour, and it has all led to this lake right here near Huntsville, Alabama. Wheeler Lake is the site of the 2016 Forestwood Cup, and 50 of the most talented anglers in the country had to earn entry into this premier event. But that first day we get up there, we just got all this rain, and all this duckweed flooded the canal. And I mean, as soon as I saw the duckweed, I mean, the light switch went on. And we should get as far as we can off this lake. And, um, you know, I picked a creek and it was one of the creeks I've never even been in before. And I was like, we're gonna run this thing as far as we can, you know, to the back of it. All right, guys, we've traveled a long ways from Ditto Landing. I know it's a surprise. John Cox is not on a river ledge. We've traveled way up a creek and you can see He's about as far back in here as you can go. Only a crazy man would go this far and a guy in an aluminum boat, and that's John Cox. We hit logs, we hit rocks, we about got thrown out twice, but it was just, it was so far, you couldn't just idle it. The man who decided to find his own thing was Mercury Pro John Cox of DeBerry, Florida. He worked his boat through a tiny creek and proceeded to light up the leaderboard to the tune of 16 pounds on day one and grab the lead. John Cox with a two pound, four ounce lead on Wheeler Lake. Wow! You know, it was leading tournament day one. You know, leading day one in the Forest Wood Cup. You know, I've always wondered, like, you know, is that gonna happen one of these days? You know, I've always done so awful in the Forest Wood Cup. And, uh, you know, and we're leading day one, day two, we go back, do the same thing, about rip the motor completely off on one of them logs. We hit it so hard, it knocked the motor out threw me forward into the steering wheel, threw my guy up on the front deck. I mean, it, it was, you know, that Mercury is just, you know, it's just, you know, it just kept going, had the buzzards going off and everything, but it just, it never, it never let us down, you know? John Cox is leading, and with some history, he realizes just how sweet this opportunity is. Back in 2011, uh, things were tough. I was struggling on tour. You know, we're just making it by, barely, and everybody's like, you need to get a real job. You need to, you know, you know, you need to, you know, just grow up and quit chasing this thing. And 
Uh, <laughs> I'm getting chills talking about it. And then, uh, you know, 2011 winning at the Red River and then, you know, even just some struggle in between there and to now be here, you know, leading the Forest Wood Cup. On day two, Cox went right back to work in the same creek and the backs of creeks started to emerge as a good pattern for anglers looking to make the weekend cut. Got back there and caught him again, doing the same thing, throwing the frog and stuff. And, uh, you know, in that time we had a, we had a whole, a whole bunch of camera people. I mean, they had it all blocked off behind me with camera boats. There was camera guys in the woods. I mean, it was just, it was awesome. And it was just like, uh, you know, it's like I uh, had uh, this uh, crowd of people watching me fish. And every time I caught one, you know, I feel like some of the people were more excited than I was. And it was just, it really, it really felt good. It was, uh, it was just awesome. At the end of two days, John Cox is feeling good about his chances. But Jacob Wheeler moved up 30 places on day two by also working the back of a creek, much in the same way he won his Forest Wood Cup title back in 2012. Going in day three, um, I just really felt like there wasn't many fish left in this creek. You know, I've hammered it for two days. I've had a, another guy come in, another competitor, and catch a really good stringer out of there right behind me. And, uh, you know, so I'm just like thinking, you know, how much more can this little tiny creek hold up, you know? You know, fishing the spot, it's just, you don't know when they're going to turn on and you kind of just, you know, the bites all day, so you kind of just keep throwing. And I, if we could get a, just a couple three pounders, I feel like it would be worth it this morning, you know, and then we'll, I mean, if we got to go somewhere else to finish up with the other ones, we'll go do it, you know. So, you know, I don't know, I mean, this is about how it's been, it's just slow. There we go. The top 10 field that will be fishing one more day is set, and John Cox has to be a little nervous as he saw a seven pound lead shrink by six pounds. Hey, Byron Valve, got here. The final day action, 2016 Forest Wood Cup. I'm looking for John Cox, and the rumor is he's back there. Back here where I'm fishing, it, it's a way off the lake, and I mean, it's the fishing's so tough. That's what I was just looking for, something that I could kind of get as far away from the lake as I possibly could. And um, It's miserable out there. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's more of a mentally being able to stay together, um, you know, you know, through the whole, you know, through a whole day, you know. I mean, even it, it's just, you know, and, and I tried to prepare before that even, and, and I, I fished every day down here. I mean, it was, I was over getting overheating, I'd get sick. Um, but I just stayed outside every day up to that tournament just so I could be uh, mentally prepared for it. I got back here and got a few bites and I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I, th I honestly thought it was only going to last a couple days because, you know, it's just a little tiny creek, you know, and it's not, it's not that big and you just think it wouldn't hold up for a four day event. You know, you usually need something more than that. You know, here we are on the fourth day leading the tournament and, and we have a shot at winning right here. Got her. I got her. I got her. It's gonna go down. It's gonna go down quick though. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, maybe it is the winning spot. Okay. Let's make that happen. Oh. Ooh, I'm shaking. I usually never shake. Alright. Here we go. That's a better one. Got her. That's the quality we need enough that it is. I got her. It's gonna go down. And here we are with John Cox, who's led all three days. Michael Neal versus John Cox. Number four, a five-pass limit for John Cox. You need to dethrone Michael Neal just seven pounds and five ounces. Five worth. 11 pounds, eight ounces. Your champion is John Cox. Wow! John Cox is the 2016 Forest Wood Cup champion. Congratulations to you, John. Here's something else you may be proud of. That's that $300,000 check from FLW. John Cox, 
your new 2016 Cup champion. For a four day total, 54 pounds, 13 ounces on Alabama's Wheeler Lake. That's an impressive feat this time of year. It was an amazing week. I mean, it was just, I didn't, I didn't think that hole was going to be the winning spot and it ended up being the winning spot. I was pretty torn up. I missed a couple in a row and then I caught that big one, but I kind of think it might have been the same fish just staying in front of me and I finally caught her. I built an MHX rod. It was an FB885 and, uh, and I tied a frog on it. And I went as far, I took my Crestliner Mercury as far back in one of the creeks as I possibly could. And uh, I got back there and I just put my head down and, and threw it for the last four days and, uh, and jacked them. I gotta thank everybody that came out. I mean, I, I've the most family and friends I usually have ever had at a weigh-in is probably three or four. And I don't know how many showed up for this one. So this is awesome. Your new Riding Force One Cup champion, John Cox. It's one of the most heartwarming stories. John Cox, the everyman of bass fishing, outfishes 49 of the best anglers in the world to earn the most prestigious title of his career.